cool. Hey guys, welcome to Make Anything. I'm Devin, and today we're talking about animal bones. Well, not real bones, but rather these uh, 3D printed skulls that I sculpted in virtual reality. If you watch all my videos, I've already teased each and every one of these, but I haven't actually shown you guys how I go about making them. So that's what today's video is about. We're gonna jump into virtual reality and actually sculpt one of these. So here we've got this deer skull. This was my first and largest. And uh, as you can see, it's kind of an abstract version of a skull. It's not the, the full structure, but kind of an outline style of the structure, which I really like. It's kind of based on my own drawing style when it comes to pen and ink. I really like using thin lines. So I kind of brought that into 3D and made these thin line outlines of these animal skulls. And from there, I wanted to try out some different sculpting methods and I made this chicken skull in virtual reality as well. Don't ask me why I chose a chicken skull. I don't really know why. But after that, just last week, I sculpted this ram skull, and this is by far my favorite because it's got these really cool curling horns, and these are printed in Filamentum's Vertigo Gray, and then we've got this skull in this really bright white PLA. That's Matter Hackers Pro. Yeah, it looks super cool, and this is the one I'm actually going to show you guys today in terms of the whole sculpting process from start to finish. Before we jump right into that, I want to talk about funding the channel a bit. As you guys know, every now and then I'll get a sponsored video where a company will pay me a flat rate in order to talk about their service. You've heard me talk about Audible, you've heard me talk about Squarespace. This week, instead, I thought I would try just using Amazon affiliate links. So the way that'll work is I'll put some links in the description and if you guys sign up, I get three bucks for each service you sign up for. So for example, we've got Amazon Prime. If you're for some reason not signed up for Amazon Prime already, I've had it for several years, I love it. I've barely left the house to buy things since I got it, because everything's on Amazon, but uh, it's got free two-day shipping, and you've also got Amazon Prime video and music that comes with that. So you have Amazon exclusive videos, as well as other TV shows and movies. You've got ad-free music streaming. So it's a lot of cool stuff. If you've never tried Amazon Prime, now would be a great time. Check out that link in the description and sign up for a 30-day free trial. And that's what's so awesome about this. It's completely free for you, and I get three bucks. I'll put a few other Amazon services down in the description as well. I would really appreciate it if you guys check it out and sign up to anything that looks interesting to you. And then, of course, I still have my Patreon. If you're interested in doing monthly pledges, that helps me out so much. So thank you to my patrons, and thank you to people... Oh. Okay, I guess that's a sign to move on. Let's jump into VR and make this RAM school. All right, here we are in virtual reality, and if you've watched my previous VR sculpting videos, you may notice that things look a bit different. And that's because I have been using Gravity Sketch for a lot of my last videos, but this time I actually went ahead and decided to try out Codon, which I used for my very first VR sculpting video, but it was in very early beta at the time, and I checked it out again, and things have improved a lot. So it's actually gonna be really nice for this type of project. As you can see, I've already started sculpting out the skull here, and what you can't see is that I do have another window open in my VR that allows me to look at a reference image at the same time. So I do have this image of a RAM skull that I'm referencing while I'm drawing this, so that I'm not going in completely blind. Still, like I said, I am trying to go for a bit of an abstraction, kind of a stylized version of the skull, so I'm not too worried about sticking exactly to the true anatomy of this skull. I'm just trying to get a nice representation and just something that looks really cool. As you can see, I have symmetry turned on here, and for something like this, it's really gonna be great because it's gonna help everything look really even. In this case, I kept it symmetrical all the way through, but sometimes I like to keep symmetry on until the very end, and then I make a few tweaks so that it looks more natural with a bit of asymmetry. But yeah, I'm just using the draw tool here in Codon and drawing out strokes, and it's pressure sensitive, so you can see I've got some different thicknesses going on depending on how far I press down the trigger on my HTC Vive, and that's another really cool feature. But right now, I'm just trying to get the basic structure you can see the lines look pretty lumpy, and I'll work on that later, but for now I just want to get the overall shape. 
All right, somehow I switched into this weird setting while I was recording my VR. So I'll just go ahead and speed through here while I was figuring out the overall shape and starting to do some more refining of those shapes. Jumping forward quite a bit, here we are with the skull a lot more refined. I figured out the lines and then I used the smoothing tool as well as the flattening tool to get that kind of flat, edgy look on the skull itself. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start drawing out the horns for this ram. So I started with just a thin line to get the overall shape and direction of the spiral that I want. And now I can go in and start giving it some bulk and making it look like that actual horn. I changed colors here just to make it a little bit easier for me to follow along and separate the parts. And since ram horns are kind of flat sided, I'm gonna go ahead and try to copy that. So I've got a kind of pentagon shape going on and that's gonna spiral around this horn as well. So I'll kind of try to figure out one edge at a time, and then I'm gonna fill the gap between those edges. So there's one spiral, and let's go ahead and take another one and have that spin around this guideline as well. Clearly everything's a little bit lumpy, and in this case it's actually good because I'm trying to make it look organic, and when horns grow on a ram, they're not gonna be perfect either. So it works really well for this case. And that's kind of why I really wanted to show these skulls to you guys. It's really an ideal use for sculpting in VR. Because if you can imagine making these shapes on a two-dimensional screen with a computer mouse, it's very difficult. And it still takes some skill to do it in virtual reality. But overall, just getting these weird shapes is a lot easier and a lot more intuitive because I'm actually working in 3D to create this 3D object. All right, so let's speed through as I finish fleshing out these horns. They did end up being quite massive in comparison to the skull, so I'll probably have to shrink those down, but I decided to just keep it for now because I really like the overall look of the horns. I'll export this as an OBJ file and bring it into Mesh Mixer here. So now we're out of VR and I can show you what I do here. So virtual reality is really great for getting the overall general shape and doing some of the really complicated sculpting, but there's some things that are still easier to do in 2D on a regular computer application, and that's what I'm using Mesh Mixer for. To start out, I'm gonna select the entire skull and use the reduce function to reduce the amount of triangles that this model is made of. So virtual reality is capable of making really complex models that have really high poly counts, but in order to work on this a little more easily and just to have it 3D print more easily, it helps to reduce the file, to lower the file size and just to lower the amount of triangles that are on this model. As you can see, I was able to reduce the entire complexity of this model by 80%, which really brings down the file size and the, the demand on the computer. And it looks virtually the same. So I'm gonna do that whenever I can. Now I'm gonna use the select tool again, but I'm gonna select just one horn. So we can click the select tool and line up the skull and just drag a lasso around the entire horn to separate that from the rest of the model. With that selected, I can go ahead and select this soft transform option and that'll allow me to modify the scale and position of the horn, but Mesh Mixer tries to maintain the the blend from that transformed section into the rest of the model. So I'm gonna scale down the entire horn and try to move it back into position so that it looks nice. So there we go, I think that's a good size. And now I can go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Now I'm just scaling this by eye, so I'm gonna have to scale both of them separately and try to make them look even enough. But you know, it's a natural thing, these horns, so they're not meant to be exactly perfectly symmetrical in any case. So this will actually help me make it look a little more organic. All right, so once I had those horns scaled down, I decided to do a little bit of extra work using the sculpting tools here on Mesh Mixer. So these are actually quite powerful as well. I can use the smoothing tool to help smooth out this area where I scaled the horn so that it goes back to becoming a natural transition between the two parts. And at this point, I figured why not go ahead and refine everything a bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the smooth tool to smooth out some of the lumps on this brush, as well as the flattening tool, because like I mentioned, ram horns have a kind of 
geometric nature to them. They look like spiralized pentagons. So I'm gonna try to flatten those sides a little bit more. And then I'll also use the pinch tool to draw these kind of ribs that go along the length of the horn. There are a lot of different brushes in Mesh Mixer and each of them has their own time and place and they work really well for different things. So rather than trying to explain all of them, I think it's best to just go ahead and experiment with them if that's something that you're interested in. I spent a good amount of time working on these horns and I worked on each one separately. So once again, that's gonna help create a bit of asymmetry to make this look more natural. So here's what it looks like after I finished up working on those horns. And as you can see, it looks quite a bit cleaner and I think it was a good move to go ahead and work on this in Mesh Mixer as well. So we'll export that as an STL and I'm gonna bring this into Windows 3D Builder, which is another free application and it does a lot of the same things as Mesh Mixer, but in some instances it is more powerful and it's definitely just got a nicer feel to it. It's easier for me to just navigate and work with. But yeah, so I'll start out by kind of positioning the skull and one thing I really like in 3D Builder is this Settle tool, which will physically rest this on the ground plane, which is really nice for aligning things for 3D printing. And from there, I'm gonna go ahead and use this Split tool and separate the horns from the skull, because as you saw in the end result, I'm gonna have these printed in separate pieces and separate colors. So with this Split tool, I'm just gonna go ahead and try to align this cut as well as I can to the base of the horn. And I know I'm cutting off another part of the horn there too, a little further down the spiral, but we'll deal with that later. For now, I'm just focusing on where the horn connects to the skull. All right, this looks pretty good. So I'll just go ahead and switch the slice mode here to keep both parts, because I want to keep both the top and bottom, and we'll split it. So here's the cut part. And like I mentioned, I did clip off a bit of the horn. So I'm gonna do a second split and just separate that tiny bit of the horn from the skull. And then I can use the merge function to combine those two horn parts and put it back together into a single horn that's separate from the skull. There we go. Of course, I'll do the exact same thing for the second horn. And then once again, I'm gonna use the settle tool here to rotate these horns to be nice and printable. And now I have all my three separate parts. Now I can go ahead and save these all out as individual parts. So I'll just cut away the two horns and save the skull as an STL file. Then I'll paste those back and just leave one horn, save that, and then leave just the other horn and save that as an STL as well. All right, so that's it as far as modeling goes. And now it's just time to print these things out. As you can see, these parts do require a significant amount of support material when using an FDM printer like this. And that's an unfortunate side effect, but I'll just go ahead and break all of that support material off very cautiously and patiently. And of course, I'm gonna recycle all of that scrap material, so I'll save that for another time. I can go ahead and use the heat gun to melt away any extra stringiness, and I also like to use an X-Acto knife to clean things up. Here we are printing out the horns in Vertigo Gray, and while these also require support materials, these come off really easily, and everything looked really nice and clean printed on this FL Sun QQ 3D printer. All right, we've got our parts, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and glue them together. So I'm using 3D Gloop, and I'm actually using the ABS formula, but this stuff works for PLA just fine, and I just have to hold it there for maybe a minute until it's fully fused together. And I'll go ahead and get the other horn as well. You can also use super glue or epoxy or E6000. There's really a lot of different adhesives you can use, but I really like the 3D Gloop because it actually melts the parts together chemically. So there's our skull ready to display. And since I have pegboard walls, I printed out this little hook, but you could just as easily stick a nail in the wall to hang it that way. Here's my finished display. And I'm really happy with the filament choices I made on this one. I think the colors look great together.
All right, there it is, another skull on the wall. I think these look super cool. They're really nice decoration. Super edgy and modern or something like that. I'm not sure, but I know I like it. And even though I made this video now, that doesn't mean I'm done making these. I kind of want to put a few extra on the wall. Let me know if you guys want to see the process for that or if I should just keep it to myself. As always, I'll put these files up on my mini factory for you to download for free and print. So check that out in the description and also check out those Amazon promotions I've got down there. Like I said, every sign up helps me out. So I would really appreciate it if you take a look at that. Awesome. All right, that's it for today. So until next time, I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired.